Welcome to City Roundtable. We're going in depth with departments in the city of Bremerton to talk about projects, topics, issues that they're dealing with. Joining me at our beautiful revitalized Blueberry Park. We're on Sylvan Way between Wheaton and Pine Road. And many of you have seen this park, but if you haven't seen it recently, it is totally redone. Joining me is Wynn Birkenthal. He is our Parks and Recreation Director, and also Colette Berna. Colette is Park Development Planner for the city. Welcome. Thank you, Char. Sure. It's great to be here. We are at this, this park is nothing like it used to be, totally revitalized, lots of amenities added. So when tell us about this project, um, who's been working on the project and all the funding, because this cost a little bit of bucks. It, it did, and actually uh, the city bought this property, uh, the former White's Blueberry Farm in 1979, with the idea of constructing a neighborhood park. Um, and uh, there were several attempts at developing a master plan and funding the project uh, going in from the early 80s uh, up to 1995 and uh, we were unsuccessful at that time. So um, beginning in uh, the summer of 2006, the city thought we'd go back to the well and try again and uh, we applied for a land and water conservation fund grant um, which is given by the federal government and lo and behold it was ranked number one in the in the state for land and water conservation and we received right. some initial funding to make some improvements to the park and uh, we thought that uh, with $195,000 it wasn't quite enough to do everything that we wanted to do and we applied for another grant which is through the Washington State Department of Ecology a uh, low impact development grant to control stormwater flows and uh, we actually thought that was a little bit of a reach but uh, we were granted that funding which came in at uh, about two hundred thousand dollars and that put together the uh, the base funding package to begin um, Blueberry Parks development and then um, Colette led a community process to develop a master plan um, which uh, was a series of public meetings with the park board and one of them was held at Armanjar School which is which mm -hmm. is right behind us here um, and we ended up developing a plan that would diversify the park and provide uh, not only a better community garden, increasing the number of garden plots uh, from um, uh, somewhere around um, 40 uh, up to 75, and also add some, uh, some children's amenities like the playground, uh, permanent restroom, the picnic shelter that we're sitting in right now, uh, landscaping, um, and a trail so people that, people that want to get off the street and be able to walk in a, in a nice environment. Mm -hmm. Absolutely fabulous. So Colette, tell us about everything that's here. <laughs> Wynn gave us a little snapshot. Tell us about all the amenities at the park. Well, um, when we started the design, we really wanted to reflect the agricultural character of the site as it being a blueberry farm. Mm -hmm. And so you can see that reflected in the choice of the materials. We have a cedar-sided restroom, which matches the um, lending tool shed in the community garden. We have this nice wood picnic shelter that we're sitting in. We have um, a children's play area that has some muted tones and uh, wood play equipment. Uh, also the wood arbors that are at the entry to the demonstration garden and the community garden, um, which will eventually have vines growing on them. And uh, another thing that influenced the design was the um, wetland that's at the south end of the site right, right. and that we discovered early in, on in the process. And so we wanted to uh, revegetate that with native vegetation. It was um, originally just lawn. And um, that, we really used that to supplement some of the other uh, environmentally friendly features on the site. We have porous paving at the parking lot and the sidewalks. Um, the perimeter uh, path is also porous. Um, there's a rain garden that's being installed along Sylvan Way to capture the runoff off of Sylvan Way. Um, we'll also have a green roof on, um, installed on the picnic shelter, which will be planted with the low-growing, uh, drought-tolerant plants. And um, the, the uh, lawn area is uh, seeded with an ecoturf meadow mix, which is, um, unlike conventional lawn, it requires less water, mm -hmm. less fertilization, and also has some nice uh, spring flowers and, yeah. and some, some interest well, that's there. That's evident today. The yeah. flowers are very, very pretty. Yeah, thank you. It's Colette, congratulations. This design is really, really fantastic. And I know the wetlands has been a problem in this park for years. Tell us about how um, 
How are Armanjar, how are the elementary kids involved and were they involved in the planning and how are they going to be involved in the future? Armanjar has been a great partner since the very beginning. Uh, Principal Mike Sellers has been a very enthusiastic supporter of the project. He actually offered to host the first um, community public meeting um, that was held in December 2007 at the Armanjar Gymnasium. Um, we have also had involvement with several classes. We had 75 students come out and help with the revegetation of the wetland. Um, nice. The school district has been great to work with as well um, in uh, uh, coordinating the trail connection between the park and the school that you don't need to leave the school premises now. You can come directly over to the great. park. Um, and then also we've had um, some great coordination with um, many of the classes there to develop a children's garden which is in the uh, community garden area and we have uh, three classes currently participating in that. It's sort of a, a joint partnership between uh, WSU master gardeners that are um, maintaining the garden during the summer months when school's out of, out mm -hmm. of session. Mm -hmm. um, but during the school year it provides the classrooms an opportunity to have sort of an outdoor classroom setting at the garden and, and learn about where their food comes and also um, incorporate some you know, math and science curriculum right. in, into gardening. So. Who's done the majority of the work on this park? Well, we're really, really proud of the fact that this has been an in-house job, so to, so to speak, right. and that the Parks and Recreation Department um, did the master plan design, which mm -hmm. Colette was a um, great part responsible for, and uh, our parks crew, um, led by uh, Tom Cressman and Steve Mutek, and a group of extremely dedicated and talented folks, have done almost all the construction uh, in landscaping in the park. Uh, we did have a uh, contractor come out to do some of the porous pavement mm -hmm. and the public works department actually came out in and did the um, porous asphalt in the, in the uh, parking lot area. But other, other than that, it's generally been our parks crew using, taking advantage of the late fall and winter months mm -hmm. um, when there's not that much grass to mow or restrooms to clean or ball fields to prep come out here and, and do this work and they've done a wonderful job of following what's a relatively complex design mm -hmm. um, in uh, comparison to most neighborhood parks where the typical template is a basketball court, right. a swing Playground. set, yeah. a small mm -hmm. softball field and, and this one is a little bit unique and that the features different. Are, are more complicated than right. that and, and they've, they've stuck with it. Um, and I'll tell you, wintertime in Blueberry Park can be a wet and cold and muddy <laughs> place. And spirits, spirits Especially stay high. Especially last winter. Yes. <laughs> it was this brutal. Is <laughs> when are we looking at completion of the park, dedication, any kind of timeline for that yet? I'm so glad you asked, Shark. <laughs> <laughs> On uh, August 14th at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, Great. we're going to have a, uh, a community celebration of the completion of Blueberry Park. Um, everyone's invited to attend. Uh, it'll be held uh, right here and uh, we'll have an opportunity to uh, introduce the, the community at large to Blueberry Park and we'll also be able to thank uh, some of the folks who I just mentioned who put an awful uh, great amount of hard work and effort into making the park what it, what it is and, and also uh, the, credit, the amount of credit that goes to City Council for this park cannot um, be, uh, be overestimated and the reason is that there was actually some resistance um, to the current master plan because it called for relocating the community gardens, mm -hmm. which at one time actually were right in the middle of the park, That's standing correct. pretty close to where we sat. And mm -hmm. the, uh, the issue with the community gardens was having them in the dead center of the property precluded um, developing the kind of amenities that, that you and Coletta just talked about, mm -hmm. with the playground and the restroom mm -hmm. and the play meadow and the walking trail. Uh, there just wasn't wasn't room to diversify the park's features unless those gardens were moved, and I, and I think council uh, did an awful uh, good job of weighing that issue and saying for the greater good we need to adopt this plan and move forward, and, and that's why we're sitting here where we are today looking at this wonderful park. That's wonderful. You mentioned that um, the number of community spots went from 40 to 75. Is that correct? In, in rough terms. Yeah, so. yeah. Are they pretty much all taken? Absolutely. Yes, they it's are. It's really, it looks really very nice. Well, and you know, some history on this park. Some folks have had their pea patch for 20 years and have really worked that soil and I bet they were kind of sad to see that soil go away but maybe it got transferred. What happened wasn't what we had planned. We had originally said that we will transfer the soil that folks had worked to enrich mm -hmm. um, over a good period of years as you mentioned to the new community garden location and then uh, we had some reports that there was a 
a disease called club root, which affects certain vegetable crops and, and actually makes it impossible to grow them. And uh, WSU um, Agricultural Extension uh, did a survey and realized that the club root was fairly widespread and they wrote us a letter uh, recommending that we not transfer the soil. And, uh, and because of that, the soil in the garden area may be not quite as rich as we'd originally planned, and it will take a few years to develop it and bring, mm -hmm. it, bring it back up to uh, mm -hmm. the quality of what some of the longtime gardeners had. We have all the faith in the world, and we're going to lend as much assistance as we can to, over time to, to make the uh, garden just as, just as agriculturally rich um, and wonderful as it was before. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Remember, Blueberry Park is on Sylvan Way between Wheaton and Pine Road. Please stop by and see this beautiful park. It is absolutely transformed, and thanks so much for that. So next, let's talk about lions. It's not like you guys have anything going on. You have oodles of projects. Um, so in Lyons, there's been some discussions with council. I know there's been some public meetings. Tell us about Lyons. Um. And holy moly, that has got some rich history as well. It, it certainly does. It's, uh, it's a park that uh, it actually began development with the Lions Club providing the, the funding and, and sweat equity and doing a lot of the work. And much of it was developed in the early 1970s when uh, we didn't view uh, the environment and mm -hmm. uh, access to water with the same um, amount of um, reverence that we do right now. And mm -hmm. so as a result, Lions Park was developed with about four acres of parking, uh, trails, roads, and other asphalt surfaces, including basketball court, right on the waterfront. <laughs> yeah, right. And uh, in 2007, when the city did a long-range comprehensive parks and recreation plan, uh, among the recommendations of that plan were redo Lions Park and try and take advantage of that 2,000 uh, feet of waterfront on Port Washington Narrows for recreation and see what you can do to move those parking lots. And uh, so we, we took that recommendation seriously and we're able to acquire some funding from three different sources, um, adding up to uh, over one and a half million dollars. Um, and then when we had that funding in hand, we realized that we couldn't just go out and start the, uh, the bulldozers and the backhoes running and uh, redo the park. We needed some kind of public process mm -hmm. in order to make sure that citizens were, uh, had buy-in to the project and, and also were aware that it was happening. Uh, so uh, that community process has culminated in so far last night we had a study session with City Council where we showed them um, the preferred option for the master plan that was recommended to them unanimously by the City's Parks and Recreation Commission. And uh, the master plan is scheduled for a public hearing for adoption um, in the first council meeting in July, uh, Wednesday, July 1st, and mm -hmm. we're optimistic about that. And that will give us the ability uh, shortly afterward to move forward on construction of Lions Park improvements. Wow. And you know that that'll be exciting. We'll keep we'll follow that. Colette, we've talked a lot about low impact development, mm -hmm. and we're gonna we see it in this park at Blueberry. Mm -hmm. How is it gonna be incorporated at the Lions Park project? Well, uh, just to define low impact development, it's uh, essentially an environmentally friendly way of designing and um, constructing that allows the natural absorption of rainfall and filtration on site and. This is p important because typically when rain falls on a hard surface like a roof or a road, it collects um, a bunch of harmful substances such as mm -hmm. heavy metals, oils and greases from our cars, uh, pesticides, fertilizers, pet waste, mm -hmm. and it carries us all downstream which eventually ends up into Puget Sound. And uh, this is really important because uh, stormwater runoff has been found to be the number one pollutant of Puget Sound which harms our marine environment and also um, pollutes our water resources, but for Lions Park this was particularly important because it sits at a lower elevation than the surrounding neighborhood, so right. it's uh, capturing a lot of the rainfall off of that neighborhood that runs over the hard surfaces directly into mm -hmm. Port Washington Narrow. So uh, the, the project will be redeveloped with these low impact development techniques such as rain gardens, porous paving, and so forth to um, help capture that water before it hits the sound. So tell us a little bit about the plan and when it will start. So are we going to actually see the um, parking lot? It's going to be moved. And what happens with the ball fields and all the walking path and that? Well, you're absolutely right. The parking lot will be moved. It'll go um, uh, back towards the park entrance, opening up the waterfront for trails and, 
and grassy meadow play area. Beautiful. And um, um, the plan will basically um, take the park and transform it into more of a multi-use community park from right now, which is really a, uh, a ball field complex, mm -hmm. um, with the four softball fields taking up about 80% um, of the park's usable space if you, if you count the parking and the access roads and dugouts and concession mm -hmm. stands that go along mm -hmm. with them. Um, the plan will take um, the north portion of the park and uh, remove the two ball fields, which uh, right now are they're fairly undersized. They're not the best ball fields. The best ball fields in the park are fields one and two in the south area. Right. We'll leave those and enhance them. Uh, and the ball fields in the northern portion of the park will become uh, a grassy, passive open space along with a marine-themed playground um, that'll uh, pay homage to the uh, whale visit when the whales came up in right, 1997 cool. and people um, thronged onto the coal dock to view those mm -hmm. whales. We'll, we'll have, uh, we're looking at a, doing a whale sculpture in the play area and interpretive signage that show photos of the visit to kind of commemorate a little bit of Bremerton's Neat. recent history and tie that into the wildlife and ecology of Future Sound of Port Washington Narrows. Um, so we're excited to be able to get year-round use of the north portion of the park uh, by putting in that playground, a family picnic shelter, um, a new restroom in that area of the park. And right now that uh, portion of the park has the boat launch, of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, once you uh, use the boat launch, the nearest restroom is, is about a quarter of a mile away. Right. And so we're gonna remedy that by bringing up um, a restroom that'll service the play meadow, uh, the playground, and, and the uh, boat launch. And uh, so the park is almost going to be turned inside out. Mm -hmm. A lot of the, uh, hard, the hard surface that you see now that's on the shoreline is going to go upland, and a lot of the grassy right. area will be uh, towards the shore. And the restoration process will include things like um, adding anchored woody debris and native plantings to not only stem erosion, but give a softer and more natural feel to the shoreline. Mm -hmm. And uh, in a way, um, Lions Park will then become a little bit similar, at least in its northern half, to Evergreen Park, uh, which oh, is something nice. that can be used um, year-round and uh, while we'll maintain um, active sports fields. It'll, it'll have two lit softball, baseball fields. It'll have a basketball court. Um, it'll ha actually have two playgrounds once we're done, in addition mm -hmm. to the large playground at the north portion. Also be a smaller playground located next to the ball fields uh, that'll allow parents to watch their children if they're participating in, in the softball. So we're looking forward to, we're looking Beautiful. forward to those um, changes happening and collect and give you a really good idea on the schedule. Good. When will it start? I'm, you know, softball season I know goes into September, I think. Yeah. So when will we start to see some uh, change? We are. We'll be starting construction in spring 2010. We oh, okay. anticipate going out to bid April and then starting construction as soon as May 2010. Great. And then the park will actually be closed for one season and we'll have it reopen spring of 2011. Wow! Very, very exciting. Um, will there still be a walking path at Lions Park? Oh yeah, it's going to be expanded actually. I think that's one of the most mm -hmm. pop, you know, there's a lot of popular um, portions of the park and aspects, mm -hmm. but the walking trail is, you go out there any morning, afternoon, evening, mm -hmm. and there are hundreds of people using oh, the yeah. walking path. It's very important. Well, let's talk about summer activities. We are in the summer season. Um, so tell us what's happening for families, kids, what's going on? Well. Uh, to start with, there's such a, a large number of summer activities, uh, and I think the best way that, uh, that folks can um, get an overview and pick out the activities that meet their family's needs is to grab the uh, Summer and Fall Recreation Guide, and there's several ways you can do that. Uh, one is to call us at um, 473-5305 and ask for a copy to be sent to your house or it's stop by at 680 Lebo Boulevard in the Sheridan Community Center and we're open from 8.30 in the morning until 5.30 in the evening weekdays and you can grab a copy of this and talk to some of our friendly recreation staff regarding uh, uh, programs that um, might best fit what it is you want to do in the outdoors in Bremerton. Um, concerning specifics, uh, we do have a summer concert series coming up in Evergreen Park, and um, those no are always very, very they, popular. They are, and you know, this year they almost didn't happen, Char. I know uh, because the city, the city's budget um, in the national recession, uh, of course, uh, had about a three million dollar shortfall, and some of the recreation um, 
uh, budget line items that were reduced included those summer concerts. But luckily we've had a community that's come to the rescue and we've had uh, almost 10 sponsors come up and donate money so that we could have that summer concert oh, series. And included in, among those sponsors, and I won't be able to remember them all, are West Sound Arts Council, um, Airport Auto Wrecking, uh, Viking Fence, um, the Bremerton Rotary Club, which recently contributed $1,000 towards the concerts, and, and uh, nice. more than five or six other families and, and local businesses. And so that summer concert series starts out um, on July 21st at 6 o'clock uh, at Evergreen Park with Swing Fever. And then the next concert will be July 28th, Cowboy Buck, a, lo <laughs> a local favorite. Yeah, he is and very favorite. Lots of people like him. Three it. concerts at Evergreen, er, at Evergreen Park, and we'd like to uh, get everybody to come on down and listen to some music. Um, in addition, uh, some of the uh, projects that we haven't had a chance to talk about today are, are going to be explored through our recreation program this summer. And uh, Stephenson Canyon, which is a 28-acre uh, ravine area uh, located not far from where we're sitting, right. actually just be right. kind of behind us, um, has been gone through with the help of some community groups and church groups who've cleaned it up, uh, we've organized a trail system, um, built steps, uh, put up signage uh, about how to find your way through that, yes. through those trails <laughs> so folks don't get lost, uh, and, and also clearly mark the trailheads. Um, and some interpretive soundings about the history of the canyon and the wildlife of it. So uh, the first uh, organized Stenson Canyon interpretive walk will actually be July 1st at 6.30. Oh, I'll and, be there. And we may not be on uh, oh, air. Yeah. I just said we may I'll, not be I'll, on air by that I did time. that. I participated in that. And <laughs> great. I'm glad you did that. There will be a second one September 22nd at 6.30 p.m. Awesome. Uh, and we'll actually have um, a wildlife and native plant specialist on probably going to butcher his name from uh, Washington State University Agriculture Extension, uh, John Mixell. Mixell. Mixell, thank you. <laughs> and uh, those, the hikes will meet at 2800 Birch Street, uh, which is the main entrance to the Stephenson Canyon Greenway. And then the last thing I want to mention is uh, Yarstead Aquatic Center is open seven days a week. And if it gets hot during the summer, uh, take the, the family and jump in the pool. And to get a schedule of uh, class times and open swims, call 473-5376. Well, you just, you did a fabulous job going over all that. And all that information is in the Parks and Recreation Guide. It's a summer and fall combination. Keep everybody very busy. Um, when I just wanted to ask you one more question. You know, you talked about the recession and a little bit about a budget problem with the city and not unique to our city. Has it affected the park maintenance program? I know you've taken on lots of projects. We have new parks downtown. How's the park maintenance budget? Well, um, we've actually um, had our, our staff reduced through uh, attrition um, over the uh, last year or so. We've been un unable, because of budget constraints, we haven't been able to, to fill several maintenance worker mm -hmm. positions. And we have also um, uh, lost some of our part-time help uh, budget right. and that part-time help budget is really really important because in the summer when you have 38 park sites and the grass is growing and the ball fields um, need a lining Attention. and dragging yep. you have to be in a lot of places at one time right. and so we have less chess pieces to cover the chess board right now and our, our staff is doing a great job of organizing themselves in a more efficient manner Good. and really Good. hustling and we also received a, a great deal of help from AmeriCorps Right. Uh, and a couple of similar programs which have given us uh, trainees. In fact, some of the young men you see out here who are working on Blueberry Park today are Good. here through the AmeriCorps program. Uh, so we're making, ends, we're making ends meet. It's uh, uh, not quite as um, easy as it used to be. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the detail that you might find in terms of, of weeding and deadheading of bushes and those kinds of things are probably, uh, probably going to run up a little bit short on that this year because uh, we don't have the time to do some of the uh, extra levels of maintenance. But in terms of the parks being open, they're all going to be open, they're all going to be green, they're all going to be clean, and hopefully they're all going to be safe as well. That's great. Everybody's working really hard, really, really hard, and Parks and Recreation is really flourishing. I'm so happy with this park looks absolutely phenomenal, and Colette, that has a lot to do with your work and your effort in the community, and thank you so much. Please enjoy your city parks this summer. Check them out. There are numerous parks in our community. 
Call them at 473-5305. You can get a recreation guide. You can even go online at the City of Bremerton's website, and that's right on the screen for you as well. Get out and enjoy your city parks, and thanks for enjoy joining us on City Roundtable. Thanks so much, Wynn and Colette, for Thank joining us today. See you next time.